Hey, Gary Hoover here. One of the things that we talk about in my class, The Art of Enterprise, a course in entrepreneurial thinking, uh, is about how we learn. Because learning and curiosity really are the single most important things, or I guess two most important things, in uh, understanding the world and becoming an entrepreneur and being creative and innovative. So talking about how we learn, I think we learn five different ways. The first way that we learn is through what I call study. And when I say study, I mean things you think of as being passive. So you're sitting there right now watching this, or you're watching a documentary DVD or a video you've downloaded or whatever, streamed. Uh, you're reading a book. You're sitting in a classroom. Education, uh, we, 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 when we say education in our society, we usually think it means the classroom. That's a big mistake because the classroom is only a small part of our education, but certainly it is a part of it. And for certain subjects and certain people, it's especially important. So anytime you're doing that, or Googling, or Wikipedia research, I do a lot of that. All that I call study. Now, you think of those as kind of passive, but they shouldn't be passive. They should be active. You should be arguing with that book. You should be marking it up or keeping notes. I keep a notebook in my pocket at all times. I'm always writing stuff down. Or if you're watching a video, you should pause it. You should uh, argue with it and so on. And so the first way we learn is study. The second way that we learn, the way most people learn most of what they know, is through conversation. And a key there, I, I mean, a lot of people, they want to <clears throat> talk to rich people, talk to powerful people, famous people, whatever. I guess that's part of it. But uh, it's just as important to talk to everybody else. I, I flew into Calcutta to speak at their entrepreneurs club one time. The guy who ran the club, I ran a giant steel mill or something, owned it, a young man. Anyway, um, and, and, and he had his driver pick me up at the airport. And I learned a huge amount talking to the guy that owned the steel mill. But I learned even more talking to the guy's driver. I ask, well, is your little girl in school? Is your little boy in school? Because India, in order to realize its full potential, has to close the literacy and education gap between the men and women in that country. And obviously, that starts with little boys and little girls. And, and you learn just as much from poor people as from rich people, from workers as from bosses, from little kids and old people as from middle-aged people. My rule is there's not a person on earth I can't learn something from. It's up to me to figure out what it is, and it may be to figure out how it relates to my current project. So conversation is really important. Third thing, one that's not taught in school much, is observation. Um, having your ears open, watching what's around you. A lot of the younger students I have are so caught up in their own little world and their Facebook and their cell phones and their uh, iPods and all that stuff's great. That's fine. I love gadgets too. But I, I keep a list of over 180 business ideas in my business list. I've been keeping it since I was like 12. And I'll bet you half those ideas wouldn't be on there if I hadn't overheard conversations in restaurants. So you've got to be connected. You've got to have your eyes open. If you go into any reasonably well-run supermarket, even when it's closed, go in for a half hour, and if you get your eyes open, and if you're looking for this, you ought to be able to come out in 30 minutes, whatever, and tell me what's the average age of the people that shop that store, what's their income, what's their ethnicity, what's their family size. It's all over those shelves. In the class I teach, we go to a, a, out, out in the field, usually to a great big shopping mall, and have all kinds of assignments. What can we learn just by looking and observing? When I studied the museum industry, I visited 400 museums worldwide, working on my fourth uh, startup. And, and I'd sit there and I'd watch. What exhibits do people go to first? What order do they go to the exhibits in? Do they turn right or do they turn left? Um, what catches their attention? How long do they spend at each exhibit? And how do those factors vary by gender, by age, by income? It's just a wealth of information out there. And the key is just having your eyes open. And, and these are the kind of things. These learning methods are things where you get in the habit of doing them. You get used to them. You don't know how not to. Somebody the other day asked me uh, something about how I came up with 180 business ideas or did I ever worry about running out of ideas or whatever. How did I trigger it? How did I make it happen every day? And I'm like, well, I can't help myself. At this stage of the game, everywhere I look, I see opportunities. The fourth way that we learn is through experience which I can also call experimentation and or trial and error. 
I sit on some nonprofit boards and stuff, and a lot of times in that environment you're here, what if we fail? What if we fail? I don't know. We can't do that. We can't try that. We might fail. Hey, the whole idea of entrepreneurship is to fail, to fail a lot and to fail often, to try stuff, see what works, learn from it. And when you fail, then you fix it. You do it better, you try it again. Once in a while you get lucky, you do something right, well, then do that again. But you always got to watch because what worked yesterday might not work tomorrow, and what didn't work yesterday might work tomorrow. But man, trial and error in some parts of entrepreneurship, like pricing. Pricing in particular is a field I've always found extremely difficult to like pre-guess. You got to make an estimate, but you got to put a price out there. But you only really learn by trying the price and taking it up and taking it down and trying different offers and seeing what happens if you put stuff on sale and what, whatever. And and but there's a lot of aspects of, uh, of entrepreneurship and entrepreneurial thinking that require that experimentation. The fifth one and the one that gets left out a lot is thinking. That sounds weird, I know, but so many people act before they think. So many people jump in a pool before they've looked at how deep the pool is. Uh, they don't do their research. They don't do their homework. They don't understand their competition. But you do that through all these methods, but then take all those inputs and cut off the phone, cut off the email, and go think about it. I don't care if you go off in the woods. I love to. I live near the in the Texas Hill Country, the edge of it. I love to go back road driving in the Hill Country. That's where I have my clearest, most vivid thoughts. I have whiteboards all over my house, like this one, because uh, I think visually and I like to draw diagrams and arrows and all that. But whatever works for you, take the time to work through all these things that you've learned through these different methods. And and the thing is, and and on top of all that, it applies to all of them. Travel. And yeah, yeah, go see China, go see India, see the other side of the world. I'm real big on going to Mexico these days, even with all the challenges it has. It's an amazing country with a huge future. And I mean that, but I also mean go to the town next door. Go to the state next door. Go to the neighborhood on the other side of your city. Get out and apply all these methods as you travel. And if you keep your eyes open, and if you get in the habit of using all these methods and intertwining them all the way you go, then the world will be yours. The world will be your oyster, as they say, and, and it'll, it'll change your life. So I'm Gary Hoover. Thanks for your time. I'll see you later.